Hi, I'm John Rosser. I'm the general manager of Weaver's Way, which is right up the street. Uh, we are a two-store, $21 million a year operation. Um, I think I'm probably going to say a lot of the things that you just heard from these other GMs uh, because it's, it's intuitive and it works. Uh, but one thing that I, I haven't heard said yet that I think is an important place to start from, at least it is for me personally and for our co-op, and that is that competition is actually really good for us. Um, I love competition. And uh, I think about when I was a kid, I was a swimmer. And I was a good swimmer when I was a kid. But when I got to high school, and I was on the high school swim team, that competition was fierce. And that made me a great swimmer. I had to train. Uh, I had to be disciplined about what I ate. Uh, I watched videos of other swimmers, swimmers that were better than me. And I watched what they did, and I improved my stroke. It's the exact same thing. And I think there's, there's no sense in lamenting competition. It's here already. Uh, we saw the presentations earlier today that talked about how private equity is flooding our industry. So competition is, is not going away. So we should embrace it for what it is. It will help us be a uh, more efficient organization. Uh, it will help us deliver more of what our, our customers and our members are looking for. So competition is good. It's OK. Um, I think that thriving in a competitive marketplace basically fundamentally means what, you, what you've already heard, and that is that uh, we have to be good at whatever it is that we do. If you're a, a um, cooperatively owned brewery that's brewing lousy beer, you're in a lot of trouble. It doesn't matter that you're cooperatively run. Your, your end product is lousy. You're not going to thrive. Uh, and, uh, and for us, what that means is the fundamentals. And we talked about customer service already. I think that that's obviously one of the big fundamentals is you have to have excellent customer service. Uh, the store experience beyond customer service is the second thing. Store experience is everything from the bathrooms have to be clean uh, to you can't obstruct customers from getting to the products because you happen to be, you know, you've, you've got a pallet in the way, uh, to uh, everything from the lighting and the colors on the walls and how your signage looks like. That all has to be spot on. Uh, you heard the guy from Bozeman talk about no frump. I love that, no frump. Um, so, that, so store experience is important. The food has to be outstanding. Um, especially if you're able to prepare your own food. And uh, we're very fortunate that our prepared foods, is a, it's a huge differentiator for us because it's so good. Um, and then the fourth thing is price. And um, I can't emphasize this enough. It, and it's not that you have to always be cheapest, because we can't always be cheapest, right? But it, it does mean that your customers need to sense that they're getting value for what they're spending. Um, and uh, CE has the best line of all, right? Don't be stupid on price. Um, and that's, so you have to be really competitive on price. And, and, and you have to look at what your competitors are charging and make sure that um, you are being competitive. Um, so, so we have to be really good at what we do. And, and to do that, I think, uh, I mean, if, just a few things. We have, you have to hire the very best people that you possibly can. Um, you have to keep up with your industry, uh, know the trends, know your competitors, know what they're doing well. Uh, do a SWOT analysis of your competition. Do a SWOT analysis of yourself and your individual departments. Um, right, run a tight ship. Look at your numbers often. We look at our numbers on a, on a well, our store managers are looking at our numbers on a daily basis. I look at our numbers generally on a weekly basis. Certainly look at those monthly P&Ls, make corrections. Uh, have a long-term forecast. The numbers matter. And, uh, and I think this is a hard thing to do, but it's an essential thing to do. It's a hard thing to do for any small organization. Uh, and that is to, th to take a step back from your operation and give yourself time to think strategically. Um, we spend so much of our time exhausting ourselves just running our day-to-day -day operations, right? Keeping the registers ringing, keeping the, stock, the, the shelves stocked. Uh, there's not a whole lot of time at the end of the day. We just want to go home, right? We're tired. And uh, 
So, so you have to force yourself out of that day to day. You have to pull yourself out and you have to give your so yourself some time to think strategically. Um, just a few more things. I, I, beyond the fundamentals of what I just talked about, I think um, we, we have to recognize that we, ha we have to play to the strengths associated with being cooperatively owned businesses. Uh, and there are, there are weaknesses to being a co-op when it comes to the competitive marketplace. The, the fundamental one is uh, um, access to capital, right? We, don't, we can't raise capital the way that for-profit competitors can. Um, but there's a lot of pluses to being a, a, a cooperatively owned business. And, and you know, we have to appeal to our sense of ownership. We have to uh, appeal to the, to the idea of strengthening the local economy. Uh, and we have to appeal to the idea um, that, that buying food at a co-op is an empowering thing. It means, it, for a lot of people, it's a meaningful thing. Um, what we do is decreasingly unique. There was a time when the products on our shelves were found on our shelves and very few other places. And that's not the case so much anymore. And we, we continue to find ways to find those esoteric products or those local products or our own prepared foods that do set us apart, that do maintain the, the uniqueness. But the reality is a lot of the stuff that you see in the shelves at Weaver's Way and at your co-ops, you can find at lots and lots of places, including all the stuff that we saw on the screens earlier, all those uh, conventional competitors. Um, so it's less about the products than it used to be. And for us, we really have made a decision to, to focus on the idea of the co-op as the third place. If you're familiar with this concept of third place, you know, your first place is your home, your second place is where you work or go to school, and your third place is where you get that community connection. And you're not ever going to get that third place feeling at a place like Fresh Market uh, or Kroger's. Um, or take your pick. But you can absolutely get it at a community-owned grocery store. Uh, that is the place where people can connect into their community. It doesn't have to be a com community-owned business. A, a, a third place could be lots of different things. It could be a barber shop. It could be a cafe. Uh, but a natural grocery store that's owned by the community is a great place for that community engagement. So I think that's, that's one of the keys to this, to this equation, too. So I think that's it. OK. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, John.